Hi everyone, in this video I will explain you how to use the combo box array in the visualization and also you will see an example of using array of uh, strings in it and I will also explain you how to control the visibility of the items even so you can find it in some other video as well uh, for that reason I have created a project an empty project indeed I have added a visualization to that and I've chosen structured text as the programming language even though I'm not going to develop any code in terms of the program here so here I start by uh, declaring the variable that I want to have I call it items so I can explain you that here I want to have uh, four different items of different color and different size to be one of which to be selected by the user by the operator let's say I can here have any kind of object but I'm planning to have a circle a square a rectangle and an ellipse and they will have different colors and sizes which will be displayed to the user when he or she wants to select them uh, so for that reason I'm going to declare an array I need to determine the the, the size here uh, for the size I will use 0 to 2 because I want to have uh, indeed uh, three columns one for the name of the object one for the size and one for the color and I want to have four objects in it one to four of string and I can initiate the value for the, the uh, uh, for the elements in the array indeed uh, all right so here I will start by determining the names I have four items for them I will use square circle rectangle and ellipse I'm going to determine the color for them I will use red for the first one blue for the second one red for the third and green for the last and I'm going to determine the size for them uh, I use small medium large and small so this is indeed how I have declared my uh, array I'm going to also declare another variable I call it item index and it will be of type integer and I'm going to determine the initial value of 0 for that okay uh, yeah here I need columns and stuff semicolon in it. Alright, that's what I wanted to have in terms of variable declaration. Now I will mostly work in the visualization part. Here in the visualization I'm going to bring an a label and over there I ask the operator, the user to select the item the desired item alright I'll leave it like that then in the a toolbox in the common controls you will see this combo box array I already have uh, discussed about combo box integer you can find a video for that in my channel but let's see how to use this combo box array so when I bring it bring the item here and drop it here uh, you will see the list of properties here for the list of properties uh, these two indeed are the most important ones that we need to determine the first one is the variable and this should be indeed 
associated with the item index here because depending on what we have selected from uh, using this combo box in it the index will be assigned to a variable and it's of type integer so that's why I determine this item index as the variable for this combo box array and for the data array this is indeed the, the input data that we want to provide for the combo box array and the user will be able to select between uh, the values provided here so that's why the item should be determined as the data array okay and you can see here that as I press the enter we have these columns appearing here and in in terms of the columns you can see that we have three columns in it 0 1 and 2 and here you see three column 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 written as well I will discuss later about this whether we can select one or more of them or deselect them and there are some other properties here as well but for now let's just see what happens if we uh, just log in and run the code in the current format okay hopefully there are no problems so that's what you see Th this is the label please select the item and initially we don't have any selection and the uh, item index here is zero so clicking on the combo box I see the available options here in it square, circle, rectangle, ellipse of different color and different size so we can also change the width of each column here to fit the, the text in, in it but that's uh, some minor detail in it selecting on the first one you see that the index becomes 1 selecting the second one index becomes 2 and you see the values here circle blue medium for the third one we see the index is 3 and for the last one the index in this indeed equal to 4 and then whenever one is selected you see that it is highlighted in green alright now I want to add those items into visualization and control their visibility using by referring indeed to this item index let's log out here in the toolbox from the basics I need to bring a uh, square circle rectangle and ellipse so I need this these two as the circle and rectangle and I need one circle and one ellipse in terms of the size uh, I need to make them small, medium, large and small so I will ca I consider this as a small medium again uh, large and small this is considered as large and this is a small let's say ellipse I also need to determine the color so red, blue, red, green to determine the color for each one of these items after selecting it uh, here in the colors uh, let me just yeah determine where, where it is here we can just select the feeling color and now you see that it becomes red I need red red, blue, red, green this one should be blue this needs to be red uh, uh, you can just choose the, the red from here as well but for now that's not the point and this one should be green 
Alright, now the only thing which is left is controlling the visibility for each of one of these items. As we have seen, when the first item is selected, the item index becomes 1. And that's when I want to display this the for the first item. So for that, here we have the invisibility property in the state variables. And here I can refer indeed to the item index, but it's an integer value. So whenever it becomes 1, if I just subtract 1 from that, the value here will become 0. Otherwise it's not 0. And here I can use this int to boolean conversion of the value. And then we will see when the the first item is selected, here I have 0 as a result uh, this will be false, otherwise it will be true. Whenever it's true, the item will be in invisible and whenever it is false, the item will be uh, invisible, yeah? Visible, it will, it will become visible. So I just copy and paste this for the other items and then change the, the value, the corresponding value here. to 3 and here to 4. Now what you can do is that you can just place all these items on top of each other as well. Like this. And then just we need to log in and run the code. Hopefully there will be no errors and yeah there's there's no error and we can run it. So initially there's no item is selected then I can just select this the first item, second item, third item and the fourth item. And you can see that the corresponding element appears here, here as well. So now let's see some of the properties for this combo box. As I already mentioned here we have the columns and in the list of the columns you, you see it that there is a tick in front of each one of them. Uh, let's try to remove the tick from the second one and log in again. Now when we run the code, the middle column in it shouldn't be displayed. And that's, you can see here that that's the case. The middle one was the uh, color, I believe. We can also remove the first or the third, but we cannot remove all the the three. Indeed, it's not possible to remove all the columns because then there is there will be no data to be shown to the user. As I already mentioned, you can also uh, for each column in it, you can determine the width. Uh, let's say for the first column, I change it to 70. Let's see what ha what will happen in it. And here we go. Now you see that, that the text is displayed properly for the second one. Maybe we, we need to change it for the third one indeed to increase it a little bit as well. Uh, okay. Yeah, here. Uh, for the third one, I will make it 50. And let's see how it works. Here we go. So we have all the text displayed within the uh, combo box array. There are also some other properties. I'm not going into the details of them. You can, uh, for example, determine the maximum number of array index to be used within this combo box array or uh, you can determine the number of visible rows, you can change the row height and so on and so forth. I just let you to go through them on your own. You, you can also determine whether you want to have a, to have an image displayed in a column uh, through this property, determine the image and so on and so forth. But I guess it, that's uh, uh, enough for this video and I hope you have enjoyed watching it. So in this video, 
I guess what you have learned is that you have learned how to use the combo box array. You have seen some of some properties for for the, for this element in it. How to associate a data variable with it. How to determine or associate a variable which receives the index of the selected item. You have learned how to declare an array of strings and you also have learned how to determine the visibility of the items in the visualization especially by directly converting uh, some integer value which is calculated directly within the visualization into a boolean variable okay again that's all for this video i hope you have enjoyed it please uh, do share the video with your friends spread the word and help me in developing the channel. Thank you for watching and see you next time.